Hello and welcome along to the Vicobi King and Queen of the Harbour 2019, live from Takapuna Boating Club on Auckland's North Shore. Currently we are sitting in the boat club, waiting for the short course and the kids race to get underway. Also currently underway at the moment from the Whangakroa Peninsula, the long course is well underway. current leader at the moment is Tom Ashley and as we can see from the start all the GPS pinging around they made their way out into the harbour before heading towards the southwest and making their way into the Takapuna Boating Club and that is where they currently are now just off the beach of Long Bay. The estuary up to the top left of the screen is Okura and they will shortly be hitting the Browns Bay Beach as we can zoom out where they started and where they're aiming for. So you'd say that's almost halfway through and so we shall be seeing them there in roughly an hour to an hour and a half. The leaders should be coming in. Briefing going on outside at the moment for the short course and kids. And it's not just the canoe racing that is going on today. Plenty of other events. We've seen this waka racing around Takapuna Beach all morning. It'll be good to see once all the boats are out in the water. For the short course, they head out towards the Rangitoto Lighthouse. This is Rangitoto Island there in the background. Just to the left is the lighthouse. They'll go out there, turn around and come back. The kids course is just to the left of this picture by the Takapuna boat ramp. And we'll bring you all of the coverage. We have commentators out on the water on the long course, but currently they're a bit out of range for us. Once they get a bit closer, we'll be able to cross live to them. Cameras and commentators on board the boat. We'll be right alongside Tom Ashley as he comes in. It's a beautiful day down here at Takapuna Beach. 25 degrees, a northerly or north northeasterly coming straight in which is perfect for the paddleboarders as they come down from the Whangaparoa Peninsula. It's going to be a bit rough getting out into the channel on the short course, but once they turn around, it'll be an easier ride home. There's canoes, there's stand-up paddleboards, there's walkers, all sorts of boats. See them making their way down to the water. We should be having a race start shortly. As you can see the boat ramp in the distance. The kids race will be inside there between the beach and the boat ramp. And the finish line for this race, all courses, and they need to come ashore and run up to the finishing chute right in front of the Takapuna Boating Club. It's just something for everyone to do at Takapuna Beach. You want to go for a cruise, you want to go for a sunbathe, jump out on a boat, canoes, stand-up pedal boards, power boats. It's also a sailing club here as well. A number of world events have happened here over the last 10, 12 years or so. And of course with the boat ramp, there's a prime position for people to launch their private boats like we see here. Go for a fish out in the harbour. That's a rather busy boat ramp. They're jumping into their canoes now to head out to the start line, which will just be just off the water, off the beachfront. There's a little ROB in the water, little white one, that is the one of the rescue boats. 
but that is also right next to the start line. And in the distance is the Rangitoto Lighthouse, just to the left of the peak. And just make out the red and white tower. That is where they're racing to. They will turn around and come back. And with the wind direction, the tide is going out. So it makes it a little bit rougher for them, but the wind is coming northeast, so straight into the beach. It'll be a nice run home for everyone that's out on the water. And then they'll hit the beach and just run up to the finish line. So you can see some of the canoes making their way out to the start line. The kids race between the boat ramp and the yacht club where the finish line is marked on the map. Sitting currently on the long course, Tom Ashley is in the lead of everyone else. They're around about halfway, just judging by this map, off Waiaki Beach, which seems about halfway between the Whangaparaoa Peninsula and Takapuna Beach. There's a lot of boats still up, up north in the Whangaparaoa Peninsula, starting at Shakespeare Beach, but they will be going a lot faster. Completions for the 2019 Baikobi King and Queen of the Harbour short course. Please make sure you're lined up between the two blue flags. We won't start until you're all ready, guys. There's no exact science for the starting of these races when they're in the shallows between the flags, but as long as it's close enough, it, it's good enough. Live from Takapuna Beach, the Vaikobi King and Queen of the Harbour bringing you this short course action while monitoring at the same time the long right, course. So we get ready for the start. Get set. Air horn out of air. I think they all got the message, go. Hawkers, canoes. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you've just arrived, we have a great event placed here today, the 2019 King and Queen of the Harbour. Today's race will decide who is the fastest ocean sea paddler in New Zealand. The long course has started up at Tongaparo Peninsula, and the short course athletes are heading out to a turn about three kilometres off the shore, and will race back to finish at about the same time as the long course athletes. The short course uh, underway now. This is what happened in the long course. They started up at uh, Shakespeare Beach on the Whangaparaa Peninsula. Took them a while to set their pace, but they eventually got there. They head out into the harbour. Not a direct course down to Takapuna Beach. They head out, get into a bit of wind, a bit of current. Turn the corner, and down they come.
So you can see on the map that's Long Bay Beach, the big beach on the left. Where there is a green GPS. The little purple GPS on the shoreline is Browns Bay. It's Tom Ashley currently in the lead. Andrew Molum right behind him, though. They are moving 18 k's an hour. Tobias Brook. Coming in at a funny angle, but they are your three leaders. The little pack of four here. Jimmy Feathery. You can see the groups of paddlers, the yellow 19, that is the lead group of the long course. There's a middle pack with the 22ers, and the last, the last group, 16, they're about to leave. But they'll be a lot faster. Short course, a lot of hard work right now as they're heading into the wind, although they do have the tie behind them. Makes a little bit choppier. You can see there is a fair amount of wind out there with those boats flying around in the background. Tom Ashley still in the lead of this race. Our live commentators will be joining us. They are currently on a boat alongside Tom Ashley. They will come into range shortly and they'll be able to pick up the live commentary. We've got cameras on board as well. And we'll bring them home they will be knackered though after that pedal. It's a long way to go. They will be with us short. Now that the start is underway of the short course, they are going to be setting up the finish chute where they will have to run up through the finish line.
short course boats there we can see they have making their way out to their mark the risky boat that they're following up the top left in the background you would have seen some of the foiling cats flying around the place and some of them not quite staying on the foils Interesting little set up there. And they continue to build the finish shoot. Of course, the tide is going out currently. A lot of this will be on dry land by the time they get back. The short course making their way out into the strong headwinds tide going out, which will make the water a little bit more choppy than normal. And hopefully in the distance at some point we will be seeing the long course come into range. Andrew Molum is now taking the lead in the long course race. Somewhere off the Murray's Bay, Murringi Bay Beach. But looking out from Takapuna Beach. Now somewhere between the peninsula there, Fungapura Peninsula, where they started, and Titi Titi Island. And so hopefully we shall be able to pick them up on the water, bring them in. That water does look quite nice right now for a swim. It's nice and warm, it's 25 degrees, Takapuna Beach. Short course, making their way out, still. Heading into those waves, into the wind. There is a strong charge for the finish by a number of these five boats that are in the lead pack. You can see the finish line down the bottom of the screen there. This is on the long course, where the finish line is off Takapuna Beach. Nice day out on the boat. Patrick Langley in the lead of the long course. Andrew Molum, who took the lead a moment ago. Now been passed. Tom Ashley. Tobias Brook also in the vicinity. Tailing them, Jimmy Feathery. Call them the lead pack of five. There is Sam Mayhew up to the left. Might have a slightly shorter run. But as we can see in this picture, they are getting closer and closer to Takapuna Beach. Patrick Langley off Mardingy Bay currently. Somewhere around the middle of the East Coast Bay's region. Some of those sailboats. I don't know if you'd call them getting in the way of the pedal board. We're all sharing the water.
course on the short course surf skis and canoes and this one of the bigger variety on the long course and the kids are still to come as well that'll be a slightly closer in on the beach race Peter Kerridge currently in the lead on the short course as we've got some people with transponders on so we're able to find who they are so Auckland King and Queen of the Harbour and we can see all our sponsors there making this happen our commentators who are currently out on the water with the long course leaders at the moment should be coming into range shortly which means we will be able to cross live to them and they will be able to bring them into the finish line go further and further away on the short course folks they are they'll get out to their marker and the, the hardest part of the paddle will arguably be over into the wind into the waves also dodging all the sailboats it's a fun task especially when these boats get up on their foils they go quite fast. leaders of the long course are coming in hot to Takapuna Beach. At this rate we'd be looking about half an hour, maybe a little, little more. There's Patrick Langley who was in the lead of that long course race. It's actually Andrew Molum who's in the lead. Do make my apologies. The green boat ahead is the one we're waiting for. Which will bring you your commentators and your camera live from the water. You learn something every day when you learn to read the little graphics on the what boat's what? The media boat. It's clearly in the lead, but they also have a nice big motor. Definitely helps them. Andrew Molum is the one in the lead. It's got Tom Ashley, Tobias Brook, right on his tail. Jimmy Feathery in fourth, sticking behind. Andrew Molum is your leader. see there they're not far away now if we bring on the information they're heading to the southern end of Mairingi Bay now almost closer towards Caster Bay now we're getting there so Mairingi Bay, Campbell's Bay, Caster Bay past Milford, that's the marina of Milford Beach, then around the rocks, Secret Beach, and into the finish. Those boats there are on the short course heading out. As we keep zooming up, Andrew Molum, he is the leader of the long course currently. And as they get closer, the commentary crew and cameras aboard the boats We'll be able to cross live to them. And they will pull them into the finish.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. If you've just turned up, you're about to be uh, overwhelmed by the finish of the 2019 Bicodi Pink Sahara Surf Ski Marathon event. This is an Oceana Championship event. We've got approximately 100 athletes that are paddling their surf skis, stand up paddle boards, or waka hours from Pongaparoa Peninsula, 22 kilometers to finish here at Takapuna Beach. We've got a short course that just started 15 minutes ago, paddling a total of 6 kilometers. And at 2.30 this afternoon, there is a have a go session for young kids aged between 9 and 13. If you'd like to have a go at paddling the surf ski, no experience required. Just turn up in your swimming tops and we'll provide everything else. $10 Beyond the sailboats we're looking at here, the foiling cats are the short course race boats that we are covering here today. They're making way out to their mark and we'll turn around. They're currently going into the wind and into the waves. There's an outgoing current though. Makes it a bit more choppy. And while they head out, a long course come in. 20 to 30 minutes away now, they are. The leader reach Takapuna Beach. Andrew Molam is the leader, followed by Tom Ashley. Starting to make a breakaway pack, as we can see here. Just the two of them. And there's this update, so no one else. Jimmy Feathery. The boats that we see, a variety of the racing boats, media boats, and boats that are on land. We can see the course that they have raced on today. Starting up on the Whangaparoa Peninsula. There are boats still up there. They're getting underway. They headed out into the harbour. Almost in line with the Tiri Tiri Matangi Channel. They made their way down the harbour. Of course, racing for the King and Queen title. King and Queen of the Harbour for 2019. Andy. The island that you can see there in the background is of course Rangitoto Island. Island of the Hauraki Gulf in the Waitemata Harbour. Maru Tapu Island, just to the left of that. This race, once upon a time, actually did went around Rangitoto Island. And there's a little narrow passage between the two islands that they had to scoot under. It was so narrow we couldn't get our patrol boats through. We had one that followed them around there and one to join them when they came out the other side. Plenty of alternate courses available depending on the weather, but with these north, northerly, northeasterly winds, it's been made the decision to go from the Fungaparoa Peninsula, bring them into Takapuna Beach. Going with the wind. You can see there, we zoom in to our race leader, Andrew Molan. Hot on the tail of him is Tom Ashley. The boats a bit further south of their location currently are the short course races. We'll head out to Rangitata Island on your right hand side of the map. Turn around and come back.
Welcome back to the Vicobi King and Queen of the Harbour 2019. We are getting our finishes coming into the beach very shortly, as we can see here on the map. Our commentators are out on the water that we are making connection with shortly, and they will be picking up the commentary and pictures from the boat. But as it stands, Tom Ashley back in the lead. We have it on good authority that South Africa Andrew Molam, who was in the lead for a lot of it, is now sitting in second place. The little and hot, hot posse of boats to the right are the short course. And they've come Molum off Takapuna Beach. That is our media boat there. That is the lead. The ladies event is second in here he goes, so he's just going to lift a little bit to get that wave as he comes into Takapuna. And um, yeah, I think he's got a pretty big lead over second place short course. But you know, that's the great thing about our sport. We, we do different length courses. Short course is a great, a great course to do when you're uh, new to the sport and you're, you're looking to get a bit of experience uh, in racing and, um, and paddling conditions. And, uh, and this guy's really, uh, oh, here he goes, he's got a great little run there, he's having a great time. And that's really what it's all about. Okay, that's pretty cool. Cool, okay, let's, uh, let's stop here. Yeah. I think so, because this is kind of... Having only taken up paddling seriously in the last year or so. So we, we now have our commentators out on the water, we will cross live to them on board the media boat. Course, as the finishers come in. Number 206, the first athlete today from our short course competitors. Congratulations, Ben Walkley, all the way from, all the way from Ponsonby. Congratulations, mate. You made it look too easy. Can I just tell you, uh, Ben, you gave us a bit of a scheme. The, uh, the front lead boat for the long course said to me, oh, God, just around the corner, we've got a guy on the blue ski, you don't know who it is. Yeah, left there for the long course next year. How are the conditions? Oh, good, good. Yeah, one, 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 one. You made it look too easy, mate. See you on the start line for the long course next year. Yeah, commanding race. But I've got to say, interestingly, you know, Andy Marlam's uh, still, uh, still there. Like he's he's just in the distance there, but he can't be beaten from here. No, absolutely. I think um, it would be terribly unlucky if Nikki did lose it from here. It's actually been a really nail-biting last sort of 20 minutes or so because 
from what we could make out, it looked like Nicky had taken quite a far out line and we were a little bit worried if it was actually going to cost him. Uh, we were noticing on the tracker that more and more athletes, more and more paddlers were actually on a, a, a much further east uh, sorry, westerly line. So um, we're pretty relieved, I think, uh, just to see Nicky has, has managed to hold his lead and managed to keep sort of the same pressure on the whole way. And it's, it's pretty exciting to see him coming in. But also is, is good to note um, our mixed doubles combination of flying along not far behind Andy, I mean, not far behind Nicky. And, um, and just behind them, Andy will be coming up in second place. So a really good race from the mixed double. And Tupu King's coming in there as well. Talk about everybody bottlenecking at the at the last 500 meters. So Tupu's obviously had a really fantastic race. He he took that line that we spoke about, that that sort of westerly line, if we can call it that. Uh, we were wondering if it was local knowledge because we could see Rachel Clark was was on a similar line to him. But Nikki and Andy have come in from the more easterly line, and, and they've all bottlenecked at the same position. So go figure on that. Yeah, and just going back to this mixed double, uh, Tim and Katie. You know, Katie's won this event ten times on her own right, and, and Tim Jacobs was one of the most dominant guys in the sport. And pretty awesome to see them here join forces. They're actually uh, they've, they've come here. They were good friends with uh, Darcy, who's part of the uh, series or who, who the series is named after. And uh, so it's great they've been able to come here and, and do this today. Um, you know, they're both powerhouses. Look at them. So they've claimed the doubles, and that's that's obviously beating the men's doubles as well. And then here we got so we've got second place Andy Mollum. He's uh, just uh, passing Tupu King, who's who's going to be the first place in the outrigger. Um, and you know, the, you know, the outrigger started 15 minutes ahead. So you know, they're not a fast craft relative to the ski. So it goes to show how how much of an athlete Tupu King is. He's uh, he is really phenomenal. And uh, Andy's just sitting there in second place and. Um, he's had a great, great race, Andy. He, he'll be the first Kiwi uh, single and uh, second overall. Is there anyone filming on the side? Yeah, there are. Okay. They need you guys. They need us there. Congratulations, mate. Don't go to stop a shower on the drink. And well done. The new king of the harbour. And congratulations. Keep all going. the way okay, from cool. Australia and local. We still have the women's one. How are the conditions today, too? Yeah, so. We should have uh, some. Why are you still filming this talk? Congratulations. Well done. Well done. So now that we've had our men's winner come in and, and Andy taking in second place, it's, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty exciting to look back up the course and see if we can spot our leading women. Rachel and Tennille have taken vastly different lines coming down this race. As we were following in the media boat, we were, we were able to try and have a look and they, they basically looked neck and neck, but with both of them being such strong paddlers, both of them are fit and conditioned. And then you've got to chuckle because they're both locals, yet they've taken such different courses. So we're as excited as you are to see if either course has paid off or if, like the men and, and those at the front end of the race, they're both going to bottleneck here at this reef marker, which for any competitive paddler, it's not the finish you want in the last 400 meters when you've now got your, your toughest competitor right next to you side by side and you're racing to the finish line. I've finished a race like that with Tennille before. Um, it's a scary place to be in. We know she's the 1,000 meter world record holder in the K1. But um, Rachel's won this race seven times before, and I'm pretty sure she's not keen to hand it over. So it's going to be exciting when they come around the corner. Yeah, pretty interestingly, I think we've just got the battle for third place coming through here. It looks to me like Sam Newlands in the Nordic kayak. He is just coming up and uh, looks to me with Tom Ashley. Um, and they've just got around that uh, channel marker. They've got to leave that to the right. And it's quite a battle there. No, they're not leaving to the right. They're going inside it. it you can go whatever course you want. So if you want to run into the rocks, you can. So um, to me, it looks like Sam Newlands is just accelerating. Look at him. He's just taking those runners. And uh, oh, there we go. And Tom's got one too. So these guys are going to have a battle. They're really having a crack here. It's been a great race. And just behind them is Toby, Toby Brooks, and looks like Ben Regan on the on the uh, on the fen. But um, what a battle we got there! If we just pan forward to the the guys battling for third, it's really close here, Haley. Sam Newlands is really accelerating. He's I think he's got a sprint background. You can see he's lifted his rating. 
and uh, he's got his bow in front. I think he's going to take third unless Tom's got anything else in the tank. Just got a boat getting in the way there between our view. But uh, to me, it looks like Sam Newlands. He's going to take third. And it's always a race within the race. I oh, know Tom's having another go. They're right for the finish here. They're really having a crack. Um, from my, what do you think? From my eye, I think Sam Newlands on the inside's got it. I think Tommy's coming into the late charge and hoping his pedigree yeah, he's got some pedigree, doesn't he? No, I, I think Sam Sam Newlands has got that. He's claimed third place over um, Tom Ashley. And it looks like Toby Brooks and Ben Regan are having a battle for fifth. Um, really tight racing. And then, yeah, just going in there, it looks like Toby Brooks has got that one, that battle for fifth. Congratulations, all the way up from, uh, from the moon. Oh, hang on, we just might be careful here. We just got to watch the women's. Followed um, shortly by Mr. Ben Keys in number 15. And we've got Peter Kerridge, number 2, 1 0, finishing the short course. Well done, Pete. So congrats. Um, as I was just saying to you, you had us sitting on, on the edge of this little boat seat here because we were obviously watching you, you had a commanding lead, but then from what we could see, we were worried that you were going pretty far, I won't say off course, but certainly a wider course, and we were worried someone might sneak in on your inside. What was your plan? Oh, geez, uh, yeah. I, uh, I was a bit worried that I was going skew, um, but I had a little arrow in my Garmin and I kind of knew where to go. Um, and I just kept uh, having a look around, making sure that there was no one coming up on my inside. Um, and I thought, uh, yeah, it was a bit of a weird race, which I actually wanted to go a bit, like a little bit faster, but I was a bit worried that if I was too far ahead, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't see where anyone was. Um, yeah. Fantastic, Nick. I think it's a good problem to have to be so far ahead. Um, but well done. We're going to head over to the, to the leading ladies now. Congrats. Absolutely incredible performance from Rachel. To to back up eight wins is, is something really special, um, especially against her, her local competitor and someone she races all the time, Tennille. And, um, you know, for despite what you think, for quite a lot of this race, these two wouldn't have really been able to see each other. So we were sort of toing and froing and leapfrogging between Rachel and Tennille, and it looked like they were so close. So you've got to wonder where this gap came in and if Rachel's line is what paid off. Um, both of them super accomplished athletes. Both of them wanted the win today. And, um, yep, there can be only one winner, but Rachel is charging into that finish line. She looks like she's, uh, she's possessed. She knew what she was here to do. And um, Tennille looks like she may possibly have, have, have realized that that second place is hers. She looks a little bit more relaxed coming into it now, but I have no doubt they would have had a serious battle out there. And, and hats off to both of them. Yeah, that, it's really great. You know, the, the battle within um, the women was always going to be a, a, a tight one. And, um, you know, I think today, I think tactics probably uh, played the part. And um, it looks to me like Rachel Clark, um, she really, she really nailed it. And, and I'd say to Neil, if she looks back on her race, she probably would be kicking herself for going a bit too far offshore and, uh, and letting... Haley get off on uh, Rachel. You're Haley. Rachel get off on her own. So, um, so yeah. Wow, what a race, hey?
I think what's also interesting to note is, is the two different courses. So, um, you know, Nikki and Andy both both took more of the line that Tanil took, and it, it really paid off for those two as the men winning. Uh, Rachel took a totally different line, and she took the line that um, that Tupu took. So, you know, different courses, different strengths. You never really know how it's going to work out, but um, certainly in this case, our, our, our winners this year, Nikki Notton and Rachel Clark, pulling off the best course and the best performance. Well, we've now got, um, we've definitely got the top 10 uh, male single skis on the beach. We've got the top two female um, competitors on the beach. We've got the, the winning um, doubles. We've got two or three doubles on the beach now. Um, we didn't actually get the third place double, um, but uh, we'll certainly find out uh, that when we can. Um, but, you know, for, for the rest of the field, you know, it's a race within the race. You know, we, we've got all these rivalries. We've got all these guys that... It doesn't matter where they come, as long as they beat their friend. It, you know, that's what it's about, really. It'd be really good to see who's winning the, the competition between the Daves. Uh, there's two, two local guys named David, and they are fierce competitors, but also, as it appears, pretty good friends. And um, I think there's massive bragging rights on the line for who comes in between the two of them, and, and that's how it is for a lot of the paddlers. It's just trying to beat your mate. Yeah, and you know what? I'm looking up wind now, and, you know, this sea breeze has just really um, kicked in, and it's, it's great, and I've got to say... The race director, uh, Danica Molam, she, she really nailed it when she had to, to call the race course, um, you know, in the middle of the week. Uh, she really, you know, nailed it today. And I think all the competitors are, are thanking her because they've just had, they've had a really great run down from the Whangaparoa uh, Peninsula um, all the way down here to Takapuna. Um, but, you know, it's exciting for the sport and it's been, it's been great today to have this opportunity to have, uh, you know, Sky Next do a live feed and we've been uh, covering the race out here, Hayley and myself. Um, so hopefully we've got some great footage and a bit of random commentary. You know, this has been a bit of fun, hasn't it, Hayley? Oh, it absolutely has. I mean, I've, I've loved every minute of being able to watch, um, watch the race for, for a change. I think a couple of things that that make this race quite particular. And sorry, we're actually just going to cut in before I tell you that story. Here we have it, our third female. She is a youngster making her way up the ranks. It's Anna Swedish from the USA. Anna is, um, is such an experienced young paddler. And um, she's just, as I said earlier, she's just improving with every race she does. She loves downward, absolutely loves hooking into a run and putting her paddles down. So this would have been a good challenge for her today. A little bit more technical and probably would have taken more of, of the fitness combined with the skill. So I think, I think she's, got, she's got both of those pretty, pretty waxed after the international tour that she's just come off. She's also the, the junior world champion out of France, what, probably two months ago. And um, she just won the entire Western Australia race week. So she's definitely one to watch for the future. And to add to that, she's, um, she's probably one of the nicest girls you'll ever meet. So she really is um, a great package for the sport. And, and we hope she can encourage more of her friends to, to get on the bandwagon and surf ski paddling here. But hats off to her. Not too far behind her, her senior female leaders. And um, I'm sure she'll be proud of today. And actually, you just touched on, um, you know, getting more people into the sport, and, and we've got a great initiative coming up later today. Um, we've got a, a junior race just off the beach. Um, the boats are being provided, and, you know, this is all about initiative to get more and more people to, to experience surf ski paddling and, and, you know, kayak racing, in, you know, in general. And, you know, there's been some really good initiatives that are building around the world. Um, you know, I think it's a great sport for young people. It, it teaches them to, to, you know, obviously you've got to be fit. You've got to, you know, not like me more like you but um you've got to be fit and 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 uh, have the ability but you know the other part of our sport is you know being able to read the ocean and, and the skill side and you know i think for young people that's a, that's just the great things that um you know you never stop learning Absolutely, and, and like you say, people need to get exposed to the sport. So to have an event like this, which doubles up with a, a kids race in the afternoon where craft are provided, it's a nice, safe environment, gives them an opportunity to get on the water, have some fun, try and figure out what it is about this race that, that mom and dad love so much. And um, the more kids we can have in the sport, the more water awareness we can develop. It just means we're going to grow and grow and boom, and, and that's what we want to see. Actually, just had Andy Milam. He's just doing a bit of a cool down uh, just out front. So he's he's our first New Zealander um, competitor, second overall in the water today in the single men's. We might try and see if we can uh, get Andy over for a Andy! quick. Uh, looks like actually he's seen a bit of rubbish in the water. I think he's going to pick it up. Good boy. Take three for the sea. But um, if we can, we'll see if we get Andy over and. Uh, 
get a few words from him. But um, you know, what was interesting also today, Haley, I, you know, but within the Kiwis, uh, there was a pretty good pack. Um, there's lots of strength here, and you know, I think we're, we're increasingly seeing more and more New Zealanders uh, competing on the world tour. Um, wouldn't it be great to, to be able to build on that, and you know, in a few years' time, see. You know, more like we've had the females, obviously with Tennille and Rachel, um, you know, up there competing with yourself all the time and the females. It would be great to see some guys come through as well. Definitely, and I think sometimes, you know, that sort of final catalyst might be having an event like this that suddenly really takes on a lot of prestige. People get excited about it. The local community all get involved, the volunteers. And, um, you know, as a as someone who's from this country, you'd be quite passionate about that. You'd want to do well in it. You'd want to support it. And, and the knock-on from that is that the more people, the more bums you get in boats, the more chance you have of people starting to take the sport a little bit more seriously. And I think, oh, I know for me, from the first day I got into a surf ski, I just, there was something about it that appealed to me, something that was, um, that was so fun and so exciting. And from what I can get, New Zealanders are super passionate about, about the ocean. It's a massive part of their, of their history, of their culture. So this just seems like a natural sort of organic transition is to get into surf ski paddling. And, you know, we're seeing all these guys coming in now after 22 Ks, guys and girls, 22 Ks. They're actually, just right this last stretch, actually looks like some of the best uh, surfing conditions they've probably had the whole way down, you know. Um, it's getting a bit shallow in here and the waves are standing up. So it's a bit of a nice way to finish the race. As you're coming to the finish here, you can uh, get a couple of little uh, rides and uh, there'll be a cold drink waiting on the beach in uh, Takapuna. Even if you just uh, kind of look around across and, and what's happening behind us, I mean, there is no shortage of ocean sports activity happening right now in this bay. Um, it's quite beautiful to see. And um, I know over the, last course of the, uh, over the course of these last few days, I've seen groups of 15 swimmers all out here swimming around. So New Zealand is definitely very passionate, whether it's windsurfing, foiling, surf ski paddling, outriggers, sailing. I know they've got the 49ers World Championships happening here next week. I mean, this feels like it might just be the hub of ocean sports. So it's an honour to be here and, and to help out with this event and, and just to see how much the culture of water sports is actually growing in this country. Yeah, I think there's some statistic in New Zealand, uh, Haley, that, that I think it's like 75% or 70% of all Kiwis have access to some sort of watercraft or it's something, I don't know, it might be that high, but, but it's, uh, it's definitely a, a statistic that's um, out of the norm for the rest of the world. You know, Kiwis really love uh, being on the water and, and, you know, for us, I think, surf ski paddling for people who are you know particularly in this day and age where everyone's so busy you know particularly if you're in your you know, you've got family and kids it's a great sport to be able to just um you know get out in the water in a short space of time and you know get some exercise and and i guess being on the ocean you're not thinking about anything else on land all you're thinking about is what's going on around you so um you know rather than getting on the screens get off the screens and get on the water huh yep. Absolutely, Pat, and, and it's pretty therapeutic being out on the water. Um, you talk about these paddlers as they're, as they're coming in at the end of what's been approximately a 22-kilometer race. And um, these, um, these athletes started on, on the beach in the Shakespeare Reserve. So from there, they headed approximately three kilometers in an, in an easterly direction around a, a turning boat. And then basically it opened up to them the, the, the choice and the course that they could take for, for about a 19-kilometer downwind. And uh, that downwinds led them into Takapuna Bay. And so here we are, this is, this is what you're seeing is, is the last sort of kilometre of this downwind stretch where it's really starting to, to match up quite nicely, the wind and a bit of runners. And um, it's pretty picturesque coming in. The beach is full, the reserve is full of people sunbathing. It looks like, a, like an awesome active day down in, down in Takapuna Bay. And I think most people, regardless of where they come in this race, will come in with a smile on their face. It's been, it's been a physical race. It would have been quite tough out there, but uh, they've certainly been rewarded with some runs as well. So you can't ask for much better on a, on a 22K race to have 19Ks of runs. Yeah, and I think we just might, um, while these guys are coming in, we might just replay um, a little bit as to how the, the men's race and the women's race unfolded. Um, you know, the start was up there at Shakespeare's, and... Early on, we saw a couple of uh, competitors really race off. You know, they sprinted off and, and took the lead. And to me, it looked like the guys like Andy Molan and, and Nicky Notton, they just sat back and, in yeah. the pack and conserved their energy. 
Um, and, and it really didn't take long at all for that for that split to happen. It, it would have been with after the first kilometre, the, the the main contenders um, pushed ha pushed ahead and and got there. And actually, just while we're coming through here, we've got uh, race director Danica Molam. Here she is. She's she's actually going to be the fourth place female today. Um, third place uh, Kiwi. Uh, behind Anna, obviously, but uh, fourth place overall in the women's, and she's had a great race. Uh, you know, she's been up a night running, organising the event, and uh, I think it was a bit of a treat for her to be able to get out on the water and um, and and paddle her own event today. Um, so well done, Danica. But yes, getting back to, to to the men's race, and then I think Nick Norton really just when the moment uh, uh, presented itself, he just accelerated and gapped out a pretty big lead over Andy and. And really from there, he wasn't really, really yeah. pushed, was he? Yeah, I think the only time Nicky, Nicky might have gotten a fright is when he, he saw the, the bow of the double and then hopefully realised, oh, OK, it's a double, I don't have to beat them necessarily. But uh, certainly there was quite a chase pack behind Nicky at that stage. Uh, he got ahead quite early with a few lengths, but, but I think Andy, Tom, Ben, they were all in amongst about eight or ten um, other guys. They would have been pretty strong in chasing together. And that's the nature of a surf ski race, especially as we're in this like development phase, is we've got marathon paddlers and we've got sprinters that are coming into the sport. And a lot of them will default to what they know, and that may be charging off the start as hard as they can for 500 metres or a kilometre. So you've got to keep your wits about you. You've got to know, sometimes you've got to know those competitors and, and expect that they may charge off, but you'll be able to reel them in. Someone like Nicky Norton, someone like Andy, they would have known, hey, it's all right if these sprinters get ahead. Um, you know, I'll, I'll keep the rubber band. I won't let them get too far. But when the time comes, I've got the better part of an hour and a half to, to, to do my damage. And um, it's all part about learning. So next time the sprinter rocks up on the line, he may hold off a little bit. He may work on his downward skills a bit. But we need that. We need new people coming into the sport to, uh, to give us all a shock and a shake up. And... Um, like you say, once once Nicky got ahead, I think it was about him maintaining that lead because uh, it could be easy to lose from the front as well and, and no one really wants to have that happen. Yeah, and interesting you talk about the backgrounds. You know, I think that, that also probably is how it played out a little bit in the women's race, if you if you look at it. Rachel, obviously Rachel and Tennille have been competing in the surf ski tour for a long time, very competent, but, you know, Rachel's background is surf life saving, Tennille's is sprint. Um, and you know, straight off the off the uh, the gun there, Tennille took out a pretty strong lead. She she managed to get onto a um, onto a good pack and, and at one stage extended out to probably a fifty or sixty minute lead. Uh, fifty uh, meter rather than minutes. Um, and yeah, and that was interesting. But you know, Rachel to her credit, she she held a nerve, she hung in there and, and then when it became time to for her to go and use the surfing strength she did and you know from there what you know we, we saw that big split you know we talked about it a lot today but um you know i was really surprised that they 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 paddled a course not nearby each other you know they really separated you know they wouldn't have been able to see each other the whole way down with rachel a long way inshore of Tennille, who was a long way offshore so yeah I, you know i was a bit surprised about that and it's funny that it happened because we, we've had it in the last few races, um, certainly in France and even again a bit in, in Hong Kong and, and at the Doctor where the field starts to spread out and all of a sudden you aren't actually kind of basing your racing on your competitor next to you because you can't actually see your competitor. So you really have to stick to your guns, choose your line and then trust your racing. And um, yeah, it, not all races are like that. Sometimes there's pros to that, but um, it certainly made these two have quite a tough job out there while they were trying to race each other but actually potentially couldn't see each other and um, anyway it was it was a fair race it was an awesome race for both of them fantastic race for for Rachel and a huge congrats to her on her eighth win and um, to Neil on a really solid second place well fantastic and I think that's a, that's probably a good uh, a good uh, place to really wrap it up here today so um, just in summary we had uh, Nick Notton from South, Af South Africa who was first place today we also had uh, second place was Andy Molan first Kiwi and third it looked like Sam uh, New, uh, Newling, Newling, Sorry, thank you. In the Nordic. Yeah, in the Nordic, who just got third place over Tom Ashley. It was a great battle in the men's. In the women's, we had uh, Tinil Hatton, who uh, took out the the women. Sorry, Rachel Second Clark. Place. Jeez, I'm going really well, aren't I? <laughs> How about Rachel Clark, who took out the women's over Tinil with Anna Swedish in third. And uh, in the doubles, we had. Um, 
Tim Jacobs and we had Katie Pocock in the back take out the doubles in a commanding win there. And uh, Tupu King, of course, let's not forget, who uh, won the, the outrigger. So, look, it's been great to be able to uh, do this today, Hayley, and uh, thanks for all your uh, expert um, advice. And next week you've got the uh, 20 beaches in Sydney, so we wish you all the best for that. Thank you very much. We're all heading over there, Rachel and Sunil again. So it's, um, it's been exciting to watch them today, and uh, I look forward to racing them again next week. And, and thanks for having me. It's been an absolutely awesome event, and I'll be back next year. Fantastic. Thanks very much. Well, that is us from the Vi Kobe King and Queen of the Harbour for 2019, live from the Takapuna Boating Club on Auckland's North Shore. The winners of the long course, the short course, kings and queens, as we are calling them here today. Congratulations to everyone who has finished. And we'll see you again next time. <laughs>